Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. This week, we're doing a giant slide table. So after looking at three or four different sources, we ended up finding a great piece of wood at the local woodcraft store. Okay, this is a giant piece of wood, and we're doing this over at my client's house. My client is also my good buddy, Dave, and he had the garage to do this. I didn't really have the room to get this set up for several weeks. Plus, it's a big piece of wood. I didn't have a way to move it by myself. This piece of wood was originally about 8 feet long. We cut it down to 66 inches, and it's 44 inches wide. First thing we're doing is just rounding off the top and bottom on each end. Just doing that with my router. So the next step in the process would be sanding and sanding we did. We probably sanded this for a good two, two and a half hours. And luckily I'm not going to show you all that. We also hit it with a wire wheel to get all the bark off the natural edge. And we sanded. And we sanded. And we sand. We also sanded it with a sanding mop to get the final sanding on this natural edge. This is a very good tool to have in this application. So Dave wanted to get a natural edge table. And after seeing the prices anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000, he gave me a call and said, hey, Bob, can you help me make a natural edge table? Of course, I said, sure. So we decided to take a break, and this is Dave's cat. It's a Siberian cat. Uh, it's the chest muscle of a cow. Yeah, this and how did you prepare it? And this is, this is like Texas barbecue. This is what <laughs> Texas does. Yeah, and how many hours have you been? Started at 1030 last night, so it's been 14 and a half hours now. So we started this project a month ago and we had to wait that month to get the legs and the C-channel. And these are the legs, they're very nice and here's where we were getting the ladies involved to see in which direction we should put the legs. We're doing this before we cut the C-channel grooves. So we tried a couple different experiments and we decided that we liked them at a 45 degree angle. Here I'm using some aluminum angle iron in order to flatten the slab out just a little bit. There was a slight bow on it and I did not have the ability to flatten that out because uh, the table and the flattening jig on that was just uh, too big and didn't have that capability. So I used that angle iron to flatten out a slight bow in it. And here I'm just cutting the groove for the first C channel. Had to do that in two different passes. Went down three ace and then another three ace. And that covered the sides of this C channel. So I did the center C channel grooves first and then I went on to do each end. Again, I had to do this in two different passes one at three eighths and another one at three quarters of an inch deep. We did not inset the C channel flush with the table bottom as I didn't have the depth on this router bit for this particular router bit to get it all the way sunk in. When cutting these grooves I allowed an extra three quarters of an inch on each end so that there's a little bit of room for the wood to move. And there we just identified where we were going to do our drilling and we drilled holes and then we're setting the inserts here just getting it set and then we're going to screw that down with an allen uh, key this went pretty easily i did not mess around with ca glue or epoxy i didn't really see a need to do that these are in there very tight and i really didn't think epoxy or ca was going to do anything additional you can see these go in very easily once you get the insert started. So 
So then you place the C channel and then you put the screws in. These are Allen head screws and you put the center one in very tight and the ones on the end you just snug and we adjusted that a little bit off camera with some uh, with a T Allen, Allen key. Next step in the process is going to be laying out the legs and drawing those holes and applying the inserts. So Dave is a new woodworker and he had a lot of fun making this particular project. It, and it's a lot of fun for me to show people how to do this. I think he's off to a new hobby after doing this particular project. Here we're using a spring center punch in order to mark a small dimple in preparation of using a brad point drill bit. And there's four legs and six per, so we have to drill 24 holes. Using a little bit of tape for a depth gauge. It's all relatively real simple stuff. Very basic woodworking in order to make one of these projects. Quite honestly, it was a little cutting, a little sanding, a little drilling and then some finishing. So pretty much anybody can do this. Here again we're putting the inserts in. We actually ran out of inserts. I mean, Dave's gonna have to buy some of those uh, and I think we were about 10 short. So here we took the table inside. Uh, the inserts are in but here we're lining up one more time and putting the screws in. It was a lot easier to move the table from the garage into the house without the legs on. So once the legs are installed, all we have to do is flip it over and see our new masterpiece. And everybody is loving this piece of wood. I love this flame pattern. I call this flame racing stripes. So we're using Odie's oil, and Odie's oil is a great product. This is a combination of wax and oil, and it's all natural. It smells great, there's no chemicals, and it goes on easy and produces a fantastic hard finish. This is the first time I've used Odie's oil and very happy with it. There's numerous videos on YouTube on how to apply. So we applied this in a tight circular pattern and really rubbed it into the wood. And then later on, Dave ended up using a buffing machine and then he applied a second coat. So this goes on very easy as you can see. No chemicals, no fuss, no muss. And again, this flame pattern is just popping out terrific. So we got the ladies involved. The girl in the center is my daughter, Allison. And the girl on the right is Dave's girlfriend, Larissa, and they were a big help doing the final steps of this project. At this point in time, we were all excited about getting this finish on so that we could look at the total uh, vision of what this table has become. So due to the lead time on the seat channels and the legs, this project took about a month. In total hours, we probably put maybe 10 to 12 hours into the project. Again, this is a very simple project if you have some tools and a little bit of ambition, a little bit of skill. If you don't have the skill, contact one of your buddies like Dave did with me. So we had a really nice time with Dave and making this and Larissa and getting Allison involved. So I hope you liked the project. I think it came out very well. This grain structure is just incredible. Again, this is a piece of monkey pod. So I hope you liked the video, and you know what to do. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop.